just thought I was just thinking the simple how much energy to uh, break apart the water to produce hydrogen gas. That's going to be some simple linear plot. But in, in biology, I noticed that you can force uh, algae to, to go into fermentation. And they developed that evolutionary niche to break apart water under um, kind of strained conditions. And they, they naturally break apart water to extract oxygen. I basically came up with an experiment where you turn on and off the lights and you put some nutrient kind of stress in the system and you can force algae to um, kind of do that. So I forced this bioreactor to produce hydrogen gas and it was much more cheaper than using an electrical socket to do electrolysis. So that's kind of, when I entered college, that's where I wanted to go. So I started looking around the departments I was, oh yeah, and I was also an art major when I first came in, so that might explain a little bit, um, if you think my presentation is kind of weird. <laughs> um, so I was a very confused art major at the time, and I went to a lot of engineering departments, and I was saying, this is what I want to do, I kind of want to mix engineering with biology, and um, then I came across uh, Dr. Weber in the environmental engineering department, and I, you know, we just started talking and he started explaining the concept of environmental engineering. Because to be truth, I think a lot of people in this room, uh, besides two, don't really know what we do, or three. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with what we do. We kind of build large reactors and we force microorganisms to do our bidding. Kind of clean human waste, things like that. So i just been hooked ever since and I'm glad I made that choice. So one of my first uh, my jobs as an environmental engineer was there's this there's this company called Casella Waste Management. It's a landfill company, and but basically they're kind of different from most landfill companies. They're not just focused on profit. They were actually focused very much on that sustainable design concept. So they actually got a like a really large grant from this uh, carbonfund.org. Uh, kind of uh, uh, funding from the government. So basically, they provide money if you think that you can lower carbon uh, on, a, on a mass scale. So they said, I wanna, we want to uh, design a um, kind of offset carbon through, uh, or stop the depletion of ozone. So if some people know that methane actually causes more devastation than carbon dioxide. You guys know that? So a landfill company produces a lot of methane. And so if you flare it off, you in essence throw less devastating gas into the atmosphere. But they didn't just want to flare it off before they sent it off into the atmosphere. They kind of wanted to um, produce, make some economic use to it or help the locals. So they provided some uh, electricity. So basically, Casella picks up your garbage is brought to the landfill, and that's pretty much all you know. What they've done is they've taken it a step further, and they've developed a, a gas collection infrastructure, which is then fed into a, uh, this kind of the mechanical engineering part. Um, it's fed into these really large engine rooms, where they design engines that run on methane gas to produce electricity. And yeah, that's a nice picture that they had it in the company. So this is a picture of, um, how the, the engines actually look like. Um, however, they weren't actually completely satisfied with, with just being able to or just make some economic incentive after that. They kind of wanted to bring it a step further. So those three pillars were environmental and uh, what else do you guys? Social, social. Social. And economic. economic. So they still weren't fulfilling all of those three because there's this missing gap. They're still emitting CO2 into the air. So they hired me to try and research different ways to kind of do that. So that was my job for the summer. Okay. So we took a took a site visit to the to the, the plant. So there's some grad students. And there's my advisor. So it was a long trip. So we kind of rested our feet. 
um, we took some pictures of the, the gas collection lines on the, on the large mounds of the landfill. Um, we just found some culvert. We want to see what kind of algae naturally grow there. Um, yeah, we're just looking at the algae. Uh, that, that's a picture of the waste to energy facility. And this was the regional uh, engineer. So he was kind of saying, I want to figure out a way to bridge that gap, create that circular path that's sustainable. And he's a sustainable engineer, and he's actually one of uh, Dr. Weber's former students, uh, Jerry Leon, really smart guy. Um, so, the, so it produces electricity, but the culprit is still there. Oh, and this is also um, uh, another, another thing that I wanted to ask, tell you was, uh, whenever waste, you know when you throw out garbage, there's some liquid in your garbage? Well, that liquid kind of collects together and it leaches off of the garbage. We call it leaching. So there's a lot of nitrogen, phosphorus, and carbon in that liquid that's collected in these pools. So I just want you to keep that in mind. Um, so ultimate result is uh, six megawatts of energy for the cheap power for the locals. But this is still the problem. There's a lot of carbon emissions being emitted and they're paying about $100,000 just in carbon taxes alone and it's increasing. So that's why they wanted to put that incentive out there to try and find a solution to this, kind of close that uh, gap. And we also took a visit to a wastewater treatment plant just for fun. I just thought I'd show you that there are some such things as these machines that grow microorganisms to, to get rid of waste. So it does exist. I don't know if you guys are all familiar with that concept. So Dr. I was just telling us how actual design of this is actually very fine-tuned up to the spacing between them. So you have to take very careful consideration as to how you design these machines. You have to know a lot of engineering and biology to design these things. Okay. So that's kind of the picture of what Casella wanted me to design. And then it's just my job to try and <coughs> design it. Um, so in case you guys still don't, are not convinced that there's a market for this kind of thing. So I went on YouTube. Welcome to Symbiotic. In the next few minutes, you will witness an innovative new technology for cultivating microalgae by using carbon dioxide. Think about the scale this, this represents as a huge... ...gases. Here at the Symbiotic pilot site, located in Ashkelon, on the Mediterranean shore, Israel, we grow microalgae by utilizing seawater and the carbon dioxide emitted from the Israel Electric Corporation power plant wastes. Symbiotic is the first in the world to successfully grow microalgae by using CO2 extracted from an electric company's smokestack gases. We take the gases directly from the stack, pass them through a treatment system, and transfer them through pipes to our open algae ponds. By using special diffusers, we dissolve the CO2 in the pond's water. By using these...